Hi everybody, hope you are doing well. Thanks for watching my lectures. Today I'm going to talk about one of the simplest uh, and most inspiring instabilities in fluid dynamics, I mean hydrodynamic instability, which is the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. The Kelvin Helmholtz or the KH instability is the <coughs> instability analysis of the growth or the decay of a disturbance appearing in the interface between two different streams of different fluids, not necessarily different, different fluids, uh, but with different velocities. You see we have two different densities uh, or identical densities, but different velocities. In this case, the velocity of the upper stream is greater than the velocity of the fluid underneath the interface. We have a, a, an interface here between two shear layers. The other name for this interface is the vortex sheet. Vortex sheet is a flow configuration consisting uh, of many, many vortices placed near each other in a sheet. This configuration in potential flow leads to the creation of discontinuity in the velocity. Uh, again, here we have a discontinuity, as you see, in the velocity and also in density. Uh, the, the vortex sheet is the main element in the panel method, uh, which is a very well-known um, concept in potential flow theory. The other name for this interface is the slip line. A slip line appears in uh, compressible flows. For example, we're investigating the interaction of two shock waves, oblique shock waves. A slip line may, may appear in that condition. A slip line, again, is a line along which the, velo the tangential velocity uh, has a discontinuity. Okay, the, uh, this, the blue line shows the disturbance. Uh, here, uh, in this analysis, I'm going to investigate the linearized instability uh, or the amplitude of the disturbance appearing on the interface is small in uh, Okay, and uh, also I'm going to investigate the increase or decrease of the amplitude of this disturbance uh, with, with time, with the evolution of time. So, so this instability analysis is a temporal instability which investigates the growth or the decay of a uh, disturbance with time. Okay, uh, let's start our analysis. Any instability analysis consists of seven important steps. The investigation of the Kelvin Helmholtz instability not also helps us to understand the effect of different flow parameters on the instability, but also helps us to uh, learn to understand the seven different steps in a typical instability analysis. You can easily, not easily, easily sometimes, but you can. Uh, generalize these seven steps to obtain the instability analysis of the Navier Stokes equation which leads to the or well known uh, or summer field equations. Okay, the first step is to construct a base solution. It means any instability analysis needs an input. The input of all instability analysis uh, is a velocity profile. As you see here in this figure, this, uh, these uh, vectors or these arrows show the base velocity in the base or in the base flow or the undisturbed flow. So uh, the base solution here, uh, I'm going to suppose the flow to be irrotational, uh, so I can use the governing equations in irrotational flow, such as the Laplace equation. This is the potential function. As you know, when the flow is irrotational, I can use the adding compressible, of course, 
that I can use the Laplace equation to describe the motion of the fluid by means of the, visco the potential function, phi. And the gradient of this scalar potential function is equal to the velocity vector. Okay, and uh, this, uh, again, as you see in the figure, the origin of the vertical coordinates is uh, on the interface, so the negative uh, z uh, is equal to the flow underneath the interface shown by the subscript 1, so phi 1 for negative z values is equal to u1 x, u1 is the velocity of the flow under the interface. If you take the gradient of both sides of the equation, you understand that, that the gradient of phi1, which is the velocity vector, is equal to u in x direction, u1 in x direction. This is the base solution. And p1, which, is, which shows the distribution of the pressure in the flow under the interface, uh, obeys the static, hydrostatic pressure distribution because the flow uh, is only in this direction and the component of the velocity profile in the z direction is zero. Similarly, for the second fluid above the interface with the subscript 2, again phi 2 is equal to u to x, x is the coordinate uh, in the streamwise direction. And P2 uh, is the, the pressure distribution. Uh, for positive Z numbers, we have a negative sign here. So for the positive Z values, which shows the fluid above the interface, uh, the value of the second term is positive. So the pressure on the fluid above the interface is uh, smaller than the pressure at the interface. And here is that is a negative number, and we have another negative sign here, so this is a positive number, so the pressure in the fluid under the interface is greater than the pressure of the interface, which is shown by P0. This is the governing equation and the base solution, which satisfies the governing equation. This was the first step.